Okay, so I have my MIDI device here and it's connected to a battery and this battery has these we call dimmer that's connected to a small keyboard and this keyboard is connected to this MIDI device and this MIDI device connects to my laptop via USB. So I have a code that I want to show you. It's ohwhatfun.glitch.me and we're gonna let it run. So notice how it's detecting the MIDI device that I have and if I hit play and if I press one of these buttons right here I don't know if you're hearing some sound it's a little bit mild um, but that sound is coming from that MIDI device from this code right here Let's see if I can get the sound louder and it tell it recognize the pitch and the duration and you can see you can hear that sound a little bit okay so looking at the code it's what it looks like Let's see if we can get that loaded um, so it first you say navigator dot request media access and then once you have the MIDI access you would connect to the input connect MIDI input okay where's that connect MIDI input right sorry there it says MIDI access that input it grabs the value and that's what you would use whichever gets selected so once you have your MIDI input and then you would have these MIDI message you would create an event listener and then connecting through that event listener you can decode that event so every time you receive an event from the device it would go through this and you would identify what type of um, you know to turn on and off the note and you get the pitch and then the velocity based from the data okay that is a good start Let's go back to the presentation. So web MIDI, 75% of the browser, it is available out there, oh, 75% of all the users. Uh, it's available in all the browsers that are Chrome, Edge, Firefox, and Opera, and also Chrome for Android, Samsung Internet, so it'll work on the Android phone. Okay, so let's move forward to what is Bluetooth. Bluetooth is a standard specification for wireless communication. It allows uh, electronic devices to connect and interact with each other. Typically short distance, you know, 30, 10, less than 10 meters uh, or 30 feet. But now Bluetooth 5 has a maximum around 800 feet. So it's getting uh, better. It got started by Ericsson back in 1994 to replace RS-232. The original name for Bluetooth is Short Link Radio Technology. It got its name uh, back in 1999. Uh, and there is a Bluetooth special interest group that has more than 20k members. A little bit of fact, this might be a little bit older. Uh, there's about 
more than 10 million Bluetooth devices that are shipping every day. That's a lot of Bluetooth devices, if you think about it. Just a fun fact, uh, the symbol uh, Bluetooth, it looks like this, the one on the right side, um, is a combination of this Norse runes alphabet, um, HB uh, corresponding to Harold Bluetooth, which is a 10th century king of Denmark. He actually, uh, he actually helped, uh, you know, uh, get different tribes or different kingdoms uh, in Denmark to, you know, to unify them. So that's why uh, Bluetooth is unifying all these different devices and communicating with them. Uh, 3.0 versus 4.0, classic versus Bluetooth or low energy, Bluetooth low energy. The classic one needs a session, has to be connected all the time. Uh, you know, remember those days if, the, you know, you have to put a pin number in order to connect to your Bluetooth device. Um, and those are Bluetooth classic device and it's they are voice capable. The Bluetooth low energy it's either on and off, and there is no voice. It's just data back and forth. It has fast communication by about three milliseconds, and also has the capability to have beacons. Uh, so in that way, you know how close you are to that, that device. In order to understand Bluetooth, you have to understand generic attribute profile, sometimes called GAT. Uh, and uh, you know there is a peripheral, which is the server. Think about the peripheral is the peripheral device, and then central is your client. These are the ones like you know your laptop, your phone connecting to a peripheral. So if you think about it, uh, you know your headphones or your you know some of these Bluetooth device acts as a server to. Think about it kind of like a web service where you have a service and then characteristics. Uh, so understanding each one of the characteristics uh, that you can connect to, it's kind of think about it as you know your the URL and then you have your path to that URL uh, to to that service and then you have parameters that you pass in in order to communicate. So. Um, you can either read, write, notify, you know, subscribe, or indicate, uh, or acknowledge. So there's different types of predefined GAT services. A lot of the most common ones is the battery service. So it's kind of like a pattern that uh, that you in, you know that some of device manufacturer, if they implement it, the the client or you know the the client services or the the ones that's trying to connect to it at least would understand and have a common communication values but lots of devices depends on what they implement they may implement something custom so it really is uh, you know depends on the manufacturer of that device there is a toolbox out there uh, it's called NRF Toolbox. It's an app on like Android phone that you can you can use in order to to understand more of how you would connect to these Bluetooth devices. And if you want to learn more or experiment on you know other Bluetooth devices that are available around you, I recommend downloading this and testing it out. So Web Bluetooth is a way to control. BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy Devices, directly from the web. It's only HTTPS, so it's security first. Devices have to be paired on the on before you can interact, and it prompts you for user interaction, and then it's promise-based API. So it's only available through navigator.bluetooth uh, and it requires, like I said, user interaction, a button click in order to uh, to connect to it. And then you, you have to specify the filters and device name that you're interested in. So how you would use Web Bluetooth API? 
a device needs to be paired first before Chromium can connect. And then you scan for relevant device, then you connect to it. Then once you were able to connect to it, you get the services that you're interested in, and then you get the characteristics that you're interested in. And then you can either read, write, subscribe to each one of those characteristics. We are going to use Microbit for this. Microbit is uh, very easy to use if you're wanting to learn more about um, hardware or, you know, it's an, it's an educational uh, tool for lots of makers. So finding uh, a matching device, you go through step one navigator.bluetooth.request device. In this case, we were filtering out the name prefix BBC microbit. So it only shows the ones that are uh, BBC microbit on our uh, screen. And then it filters out only ones that are the LED service. So we're gonna filter, I'm gonna show you a demo where it would prompt this uh, screen. And then step two, you would use device.gat Dot connect once you get the once you connect got connected you get the service and so you need to know the service UUID uh, and you can you know it's it's a constant value depending on what device you're connecting to and then once you do that you have to get the characteristic UUID and and you have you have to connect using that and then now you can start reading the values and displaying it, or you can write values to a device. Just a little tip, you can actually use Chrome colon slash slash Bluetooth internals to see all the Bluetooth devices that is around you. Okay, let's go do some demo. Okay, so I have these Bluetooth device. Let me show you here. I'll make sure I connected it. And it's this one right here. Let's see if I can focus a little bit more. Okay. It is connected through USB. And this is the a make code device. And I programmed this make code device to um, show whenever it starts the Bluetooth LED device and then whenever it connects it will show the string C and whenever it disconnects show the string D. Um, I use make code in order to program this device and the cool thing is there's a JavaScript way of how you would do it and it looks easy enough to, to play with it. So if you have a, a micro bit and you want to program JavaScript on this device, you can uh, you can do that. And there's lots of tutorials on how you would use make code uh, and micro bit together and how you would do this. So anyway, I'm going to focus on how you would connect this to this Bluetooth device right here. So once you have that programmed on on that device, I can I created a you know a screen right like this where I can click connect. Let me set this up real quick so you can we can both see the device itself. So when you click connect. When I click connect, notice how it prompts and notice how it only shows micro bit. Even though I have lots of Bluetooth devices around me, it only filters that because I specified and you would click pair. And once you click pair, notice how it says C on this device. Now that it both the my device is paired to this, I can click on one and it sends that command and I click this command and it's just sending those values 
and what it's doing is actually writing all the check marks here and sending all the bits which one is on and which one is off every time I have some changes here cool and then of course I can disconnect okay so let's look at the code real quick Make that a little bit bigger so remember I told you about the LED service you have to do your research on whenever, whichever device you're connecting to you have to know these constant so think about it you know the same way as you whenever you're trying to connect to a web service you got to know the URL and you have to know the path to that URL you know, to the path for that service and then you have to know the parameters in order to communicate same way as each one of these devices you have to understand like in this case this LED service constant and then the, the matrix um, service or yeah so the the LED matrix uh, state you need to be able to do that so first you do navigator bluetooth that request device and now that you have a target device then you can connect to it so in case this get bluetooth device that get that connect and once you're connected to that server you have to get the service the led service once you're connected to that service you get the characteristic so that led matrix state is a characteristic once you get the characteristic, then you can send data to it. In this case, I'm just sending and writing values to that characteristic. All right. So this code is available for you if you want to analyze them later on. So let's go back to the presentation. So Web Bluetooth, 75% of all users, uh, Web Bluetooth is available. Uh, it's available through Chrome, Edge, Opera. Unfortunately, Safari and Firefox does not support Web Bluetooth. Chrome for Android, Samsung Internet, Opera Mobile, Android Browser, Baidu Browser. It is available there. Okay let's move forward to what is USB USB is universal serial bus it's a standard type for connecting different kinds of devices different peripherals wired peripherals it's becomes a it became a standard de facto standard and it was co-invented back in 1994 uh, by Intel and USB Implementers Forum Incorporated. Most likely you've seen a lot of the different versions of USB throughout the years. Uh, nowadays the latest one is USB 4 that can go transfer data up to 40 gigabits to 120 gigabits. The ones before that of course it's less. Um, you know, super speed, super speed, USB, high speed, full speed. Yeah, <laughs> to go back to go back to USB 1.0. Different types of USB. There's Type A, Type B, and now the latest one is Type C. Um, there is a micro USB and a mini USB. Uh, in between also, most likely you have all these connectors or some of these. Um, you know, multi-use USB device uh, converters. Um, the latest version of Type C. Notice how you can plug it uh, and flip the the connector, and it still works because you have 50/50 chance of the past generation of the past USB cables. They're always you know 50/50 chance of getting it right. Now they've improved it to where you can plug in, but depends on the manufacturer of that cable sometimes they didn't implement they only implement one side of that specification so yeah 
doesn't work all the time depends on the cable uh, on this USB the logo it looks like this and um, it is actually uh, you know patterned against like a trident right so you have these three stems going uh, you know three forks right it's a, a trident fork and notice how there's circle triangle and square denotes different peripherals connecting to uh, your device and they're becoming standard uh, anyway interesting logo so how you would use web usb api you first you have to understand how to be able to use uh, the usb standard and then of course the cross origin resource sharing um, to filter out what can and can connect to that usb uh, first request the device then you would connect then you select the configuration then you claim the interface then you control the transfer and then you can start transferring data back and forth it's a little bit more complicated than the other ones we've had you know, web bluetooth and web usb so i'm also going to use microbit on this um, the web bluetooth a while ago notice how there was a cable uh, on that web bluetooth that, i mean the cable is just for power um, but in this case we're going to use the cable to connect it to the USB device. Um, so for the web Bluetooth one, even though when I demoed it a while ago, it has a cable, I'm just using the cable for power, uh, but not for data transfer. For the this web USB connection, we're using the cable for power to the micro bit device and also data transfer. So how you would use it, you would use navigator.usb.get devices to get the list of our devices and then in order to connect you need to know the vendor id and then the product id in this case that's the vendor id and the product id for microbit and then you do navigator.usb.request that device and then you will get the correct device and once you have the device you can begin a session using device that open and then device that select configuration in this case you're selecting the first uh, configuration there and then you claim the interface and once you claim the interface you can uh, you know you need to understand how to do the control transfer you, there's different control transfers that are available out there uh, you can request and you have to understand these values and once you have those and then you can transfer the data and you, you also need to specify some values also in order to receive it properly and then you can loop through and get the data in little tip uh, if you wanted to know what are devices that are connected to your machine if you go to chrome uh, colon slash slash device log or chrome colon slash slash usb internals to try it out so let's let's try that out i think it's, it's interesting so chrome colon slash slash usb internals so notice how usb internals you can click devices these are all the different devices connected via usb and you can inspect them in this case um Let's see if it'll, it'll show some of that devices are here you can you can inspect you know let's say you know a video and then it would tell you the version number you can get device descriptor some of the data that you would need the vendor id and understanding what are the things you can connect to what is the configuration so some of them you have to study and understand what these values are there's also I say USB device log, right? So Chrome colon slash slash device log. And so this device log, um, every time you unplug and plug in a new device 
typically it shows up here it does auto refresh Let's see if it would refresh maybe it didn't auto refresh so notice how I unplug a BBC micro bit and it shows up now if after I unplug it and then plug it back in it gives me the serial number and GUID for that device so it's it's interesting so Chrome um, is it device uh, USB internals see if we can we can find that BBC micro bit maybe it's not showing up here for some reason oh there it is arm BBC micro bit you can inspect you see the the class of device get device descriptor I know the vendor ID and the product ID based from here I can get the the conf configuration there's an interface 0 and interface 1 you know all these different values so web USB descriptor anyway it's it's trying to understand each one of these values that's the tricky part um, okay oh yeah then also there's Bluetooth since we, we I didn't demo the Bluetooth a while ago there's also Bluetooth internals and this Bluetooth internals you can actually get devices that is available out you out there that you can you can plug in so let's see if I can plug in a, a Bluetooth device I can scan so notice how it says PBC micro bit I can inspect it it gives me the services that are available on that device the ID and the new UID so you can start experimenting what are the characteristics that you can connect to this device and what it can do and cannot do so of course knowing what these characteristics are for what, you know what maps to each one of these you're trying to understand that okay so let's go back to web USB I'm gonna connect my device again so for this web USB I'm using the make code also so this is my make code device or this BBC B, micro bit BBC device and it's also I use my uh, make code in order to write to the serial value the serial port and the serial port you know it's just do, picking a random number and writing these values x y graph data so that you would just send some values random values to the serial data so using this you know of course JavaScript wise it looks something like this right so randomly getting those information in okay and then I would connect to this web USB and I would click connect notice how it prompted me that I'm going to be pairing to this Bluetooth uh, no not Bluetooth this BBC micro bit and I would click connect and now it started to send data from these Bluetooth device or I keep on saying Bluetooth from this uh, micro bit device is just sending those and then displaying it on the screen I can just notice how on the browser itself it tells you there's the icon that says a USB port is connected so you know if the window has a connection to USB and it's using it you can clear the console and start sending that data and then I'm gonna disconnect and that's it so this code I, I found it at this bceiver slash microbit on github slash dash web usb on github and I believe he's using a library called micro yeah you know, this dap js dap js to connect to the web usb um and 
in order to connect to this you have to know the vendor ID the product ID to get the data properly connected okay some resources if you want to learn more about how you would connect through web USB there is a web USB code lab that you walk through how how to do this 74.99% of browsers of users out there have access to web USB uh, using Chrome Edge Opera it's not available on Safari and Firefox it also works for Chrome for Android so you can connect it through through that and Samsung Internet Opera Mobile and all that of course microbit you can use it to build robots like this and to control that there's also a Wii terminal that you can connect to edge impulse edge impulse is a way you can um, do some machine learning on these uh, low power devices and in order to connect data you know on this Wii terminal it was using web USB to to send data to edge impulse I thought it, that's an interesting use case for this uh, of course, MakeCode is also using WebUSB. You can use WebUSB in order to send and send firmware data or to program a, a microbit device. So I thought that's a good application of WebUSB um, using MakeCode uh, in MakeCode. Other uh, connection, uh, another ways to connect is you can use the Web Serial API and this one specifically for serial devices there's also web hid which is a higher level of abstraction than web usb and web bluetooth in order to connect an hid only works for hid input and output device there's also web nfc uh, this is an, an ability to read and write nfc tags uh, using uh, android phone via chrome uh, it's very limited to you know it's not encrypted and all that stuff if you want to connect to the and get my presentation you can go to owhatfun.glitch.me you can use this QR code I thought this is an interesting QR code because it looks like a uh, you know a, a small uh, board and so you can that is a valid QR code you can scan and as a summary web MIDI is the easiest way to learn and pick up as long as you understand the MIDI message format web Bluetooth make sure that the you have to pair the device first and whatever however you pair uh, your device to the machine before you can even access to it on the browser and of course you need to learn a little bit about GAT and what it means and then through web USB you can do um, you have in order to do web USB you have to understand the USB standard and how it connects and how you would you would um, you would communicate to that device microbit and Microsoft make code is it is an awesome learning tool uh, to develop um, on these devices uh, on some of, some of these devices and then glitch really makes it easy to create and share and remix projects that is it for me if you want to learn more my name is Ron Dagdag I'm director of software engineering at Spacey I've been awarded six year in a row as a Microsoft MVP the best way to contact me is at Ron Dagdag or on LinkedIn uh, LinkedIn slash in slash Ron Dagdag. I appreciate you spending time with me and happy holidays. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye.